Hello and welcome to part 7 of a video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we're going to continue on from the last video in which we made this cartoon bunny head. In the last video though, we made it so that we had to make both halves of the character at the same time. In other words, we had to model the left side of the bunny's face and the right side just to make the bunny. But yeah, I mentioned in the last video that we could use what's called the mirror modifier to model both halves of the character at the same time. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's go ahead and click on our splash screen. Now in the last video, we started with our default cube and we made it round and then we modeled the facial features and made it kind of the right shape and extruded the ears. But it's at this point, after we make it round, that we're going to cut the character's head in half and use the mirror modifier to duplicate it and flip it as we move along. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the cube and I'll press tab to go into edit mode and I'm going to select all my faces and we're going to use that W key, that specials menu again, and select subdivide. But I want to make more than just one cut in each direction. I want to make two cuts. And that's of course so we can select all the middle faces of all six sides of the cube and from my front orthographic view, that's 1 and 5 on your numpad, we can tap S to scale out from the middle of the cube, making it basically a sphere. Now, of course, we still have those pointy corners sticking out from the original cube, so in vertices select mode, I'm going to select all eight of those corner cube vertices, and I'll tap S and I'll scale them inwards towards the middle of the circle, or the uh, sphere, so that it is now basically a sphere made out of a cube. Let's go ahead and go to our front view. So I'll press 1 on my numpad. Of course, if you don't have a numpad, um, in the second video in this series, I believe it was, I showed you how to go in your preferences and turn on your number row. So you should just be able to use that. Again, preferences are under the font menu. Menu user preferences. Um, and we need to cut the character's head in half by making a loop cut around the face front or up and down. So I'll tap Control R, that's loop cut, or I'll use the loop cut and slide button over here on my tool shelf in the tools tab. There it is right there. I'll make the cut up and down, but it's very important this time that once I click, I then right click to put the cut exactly in the middle. If you just Control R and click and then click again, you might not get it exactly on. You need it exactly lined up with this uh, orange dot, which is the origin of your object which kind of tells Blender where the object is. The object's coordinate is based on that orange origin dot, and the origin is used to place the mirror, which is very important. So Control R, click, and right click. I'm now gonna select, or deselect all with the A key, and we wanna select this half of the character's head and delete it. The reason why we're selecting this half, the character's right, or our left on the screen, is because when you press three, on your numpad to go to the side view or right view, it's going to look at this half. If you delete this half, you'll be looking at the wrong side. So I'm going to box select. That means you press B and you get these lines coming out of your mouse. That's the box select option. And now you can click and drag to box select um, the vertices. But I didn't do it properly. I only selected the ones that I was looking at. In other words, it only selected the ones on the front of the character's face and not the back half. The way we solve that, is, and I'll tap A to deselect everything, is this button right here. That's the limit selection to visible button. And when you make it light, it means like the light is passing through your object and you're able to now select things in the back and the front. Whereas when it's dark, there's no light passing through your object and you can only select things in the front. So with that limit selection to visible button light, we're gonna go back to front view, deselect all, box select with the B key, select that half. Uh, remember that we're in vertice select mode right now. So when I tap X to delete, I want to delete the same mode that we're currently in, which is vertice select mode. And now we just have the one half. It's important to note that I did not select the middle row as well, only the ones on the actual side. So X and vertices. Now that we have just one uh, kind of hollow half of the character's head, I'm going to press tab to go back into object mode, and this is where we add the mirror modifier. The mirror modifier, or all modifiers, are located under this wrench tab in the properties window. And with the mesh selected, you go to add modifier, and you select mirror under the generate heading. 
When you add the mirror modifier, you'll notice two things happen. The most noticeable, you get your entire character head back. You'll also notice that on this, or in this properties window, you get the mirror modifier options. And when you add multiple modifiers to the same object, they become part of a modifier stack, kind of like filters in Photoshop. Basically, you can add multiple effects, multiple, multiple kind of procedural changes or effects to objects using these modifiers, and they become ordered. And it does matter what order you put them in, so keep that in mind. If you made a mistake and you add the wrong modifier, or you want to get rid of a modifier at any point, you can always click the X, and that will get rid of it, or you can add it again. Oh, there it is right there. If you hit apply, what that will do is it will make the effects of the mirror modifier or any modifier permanent. Now, you don't want to do that until you're finished modeling. And in this case, you probably actually would want to apply the mirror modifier because, you know, after you're finished modeling, you probably want to maybe, if this is for animation, add bones or texture the whole object. Or maybe you just want to make both halves of the character a little bit different. Add a scar on one half of the character's face, make them make the two sides of the character's head not quite totally symmetrical. You would do that after you hit apply, which would then make the mirror modifier disappear, but you'd have both halves of your mesh back. To work with the mirror modifier on the object, it's exactly the same as far as going into edit mode as you would without the mirror modifier. So if I tapped tab, you'll notice that only one half of the object though goes into edit mode. That's because the half that the mirror modifier is generating is called, or I'll call it, the virtual half. The virtual half you can't actually select or work on, but you can select and work on the original half and that will automatically affect and change in real time exactly the other half. So that's great. It even means that I can do more than just move things and scale things and rotate things. I can actually add geometry. If I hit Control R to make a loop cut around the character's face like we did for the um, kind of eye and eyebrow shape, it'll actually make that same cut on the virtual side too. Remember, it's just mirroring what you have on this side. So if I go ahead and select you know, this edge and pull it back, it'll do the exact same on the other side, so that geometry is there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on uh, that vertice, and that's great, but I forgot to mention something. If you had the mirror modifier, what you should do right away is you should check clipping, because what clipping stops from happening is problems around your mirror. Right now, these vertices are right along the mirror, as are the edges between them, but I can move vertices away from the mirror. That can happen for a lot of reasons. Uh, as you're modeling, that just might happen, or the opposite might happen. They might go, or vertices or edges might go across your mirror, and that might cause bad things as well. You don't want gaps, and you don't want overlaps, so if you check clipping in your mirror modifier options, uh, that won't happen. Vertices get glued to the edge. You can still move them up and down. You can still move them front and back. You just can't move them away from or across the mirror anymore. And that's normally a good thing. I will mention though that if you take an edge and you grab it and pull it into the mirror, it'll then be stuck. Same thing goes with a vertice. So you, in this case, if you made a mistake and grab something and put it into the mirror that you didn't mean to, you can uncheck clipping and then move that back over and I'll just undo a few times. There we go. And uh, we can undo it. So, you know, you most of the time you want to have clipping turned on. There are a few quirks with working with the mirror modifier, especially when it comes to working with faces and edges and vertices that are near the mirror. If I want to scale the character's nose down, like in the last video, we made sort of an Elmer Fudd or light bulb shaped nose. You would just select this one square on the front of the character's face and scale it down to a smaller square to then extrude out and scale and extrude and scale to make that light bulb shaped nose uh, stick out. The problem is when you scale anything, like an edge or a face, next to the mirror, it doesn't scale in the same way. You'll notice that when this original square was scaled, it would just scale to a smaller square. But when you scale this rectangle, it's sort of when you scale it down, it doesn't make that same nice square again. That means that every time you scale next to the mirror, you then have to push or pull away from the mirror to make the right 
shape. In this case, I need to push into it a little bit because by default, it was like this, but I would want it more like this. You can just grab edges or faces next to the um, mirror and it'll automatically squish that face. You don't have to scale it. You can just grab or use your gizmo. Okay, so when you're scaling things next to the mirror, pay attention to the length of the edge perpendicular to the mirror. So don't care about that edge, don't care how wide it goes, care about the height of this when you're scaling. So I want a square to be about that by the same width as well. So I'll make it that tall. And then I can just drag it and adjust it manually. Okay. The other important thing to know is that when you have clipping turned on and you extrude at the mirror, you do not get internal geometry. In other words, if I go ahead and click the eye to hide the mirror, just temporarily, there is no face that's internal right there. But if I uncheck clipping and I do the same thing, I do get internal geometry at the mirror, which is not a desirable thing. So just keep that in mind. The best thing to do is just turn clipping on right away and uh, then you won't have so many issues. The last thing I want to talk about is the inset tool because that has a special option for when you're using the mirror modifier. So I'm going to uh, redo or turn back on the visibility of my mirror modifier and I'll make a cut through my character's head right there and we're going to make the character's mouth again. So if you think back to the last video, I selected all six of these faces um, and I used the eye inset faces tool to make a mouth. When I do that this time though, we're going to have a problem. And actually, we're not. That's because I've already changed the option. Um, that's what it would normally look like. Okay, so if you did this on your own, you would get that same problem where you get an inset right here. The way you solve that, and you probably just saw me do it, is you have to, in your inset faces options, uncheck boundary. That's what you want, that's what you don't want. So again, you can leave it just unchecked. And now I'll select, uh, un or uncheck select outer, so I get my inner ones, and maybe I'll move that out. I'll tap I again. And again, that works okay. Maybe I'll move that back in. If I scale this up, remember that I have to adjust a little bit. It's scaling, but it's making these ones, that one too narrow. So I have to move it over and kind of play with it a little bit more if I want the desired result. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly model the character's nose. I can just extrude out. Don't worry about internal geometry because we have clipping turned on. And I can scale, but of course I have to pull out and adjust every time I scale at that boundary. It might seem like a big issue, but it's really not. Um, normally it just takes a little bit of getting used to what you have to do to make things proportional the way you want when you're scaling at the mirror. And of course, you can drag edges and vertices along the mirror, as long as you're not moving them away from the mirror, making a gap or towards the, uh, the gap. Let's say I'm happy with this head and I want to ma start making changes to both sides or make one side a little bit different than the other. What I can do is I can go back into object mode and click on apply. When I click apply, the modifier goes away. And if I go back into edit mode, there are two real halves. And I can start making one half a little bit different than the other half very easily. One last thing I want to mention though before the end of this video is I'm going to undo. And I'm going to add the modifier again. If you do find yourself with a big gap in the middle of your object, so let's say I select all the vertices and I move them away from the mirror, so I have the origin where there is no geometry, what I can do, especially if it's a little gap and I want to solve it very quickly, is I can change the merge limit. Now what this means is in the mirror modifier options, there's this merge limit, it'll automatically fix for any tiny errors you have um, at the mirror point. So right now it's only fixing a very tiny bit of error. If you have a little tiny gap, it'll fix it. I'm going to check clipping, and then if I turn this value up, you'll see that eventually the two halves will come together. Eventually. There we go. The problem with using this as a solver though is that you then get a weird sort of off-sided mirror. You can see my real geometry is not quite at the mirror, and that might cause me issues, especially if I'm doing lots of little details around the character's nose or nostril or something like that. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.